Hey guys, Intercool here. Uh, we're back with the RC Viper Defender project. I'm going to go ahead and do a breakdown video of it. Uh, you really only need two tools for this project. It's going to be a Phillips head screwdriver, about P1 or P0, somewhere in there. This is just a flathead eyeglass screwdriver, but it'll do the job. And then a flat blade razor blade. If you end up cutting yourself on this because you don't know how to safety, I'm going to laugh at you. So go ahead. Use caution. To start off with, we're going to be unscrewing the bottom. Okay, There are three screws normally on this if you've never taken it apart. One here, here, and here. It's pretty easy to take care of. Mine's already missing one. Actually, I don't even think that's the right one. but. two out of the way. Like I said, mine's missing one. Alright, now if you have this um, on a not nicer one that was in better shape, you'll have a Tyco flag. You'll have to be you'll have to carefully remove it if you want to save it because it won't go through the hole in the body. Actually I think this is an aftermarket thing or some so somebody's messed with this one. So alright body is separated for now it's just like I said it's one of the simple ones where all it does is turn to the left and go straight in a future video I'm gonna be probably going through and taking this part taking this apart and then going through and seeing what it's gonna take to get it to do full function turning and then probably sourcing out a servo with an RC um, company and maybe integrate into this and make it work. But for now, let's get to the body. After that, you're going to have two more scr screws for the back bumper and two more for the front. They're technically useless because it's hard to see in the picture, probably the camera, but there's molding or uh, I guess what you call like a, a plastic rivet. Basically, it used to be a stud on the top part of the body and it went through the bumper and then they used a hot whatever during the assembly and melted it flat. That's where the razor blade is going to come into play. As long as you're careful, and of course I'm probably going to eat my words, but the other one was pretty easy. It's just like doing a rivet on a real car instead you'd be using a drill but in this case we're using a razor blade you want to get the, the melted part separated so that way we can take it apart later Same thing with the front bumper. You're going to have two, one here, one here. Now on the back bumper, I can show you real quick. You can see there's the same thing that holds the back plate that has the exhaust. You'll be doing the same thing to get that separated if you're going to be doing any painting. That's done. Just a little bit of screwdriver action. And apart it comes. Now, when it does come apart, it may separate, but if it doesn't, let me get the screws out of the way here. The headlights do come out separately like this. 
and set that down there. It doesn't matter if it's in the picture. We'll come back to it in a minute. Now, if you don't want to lose your screws, go ahead and run them back into the body. Now before I forget. Okay, tail lights as well pop out. Now when I did the lights on the other one, which I could kind of show you maybe later, I don't remember if I trimmed or not. I think I just stuck them up there with tape or hot glue and tape, but the hot glue melted because when the first test I was running off the batteries in the vehicle and tapping into the power which doubled the voltage and you know what happens with LEDs when you do that so it got really hot and melted no big deal just had to use tape to hold everything in place alright so now we'll go ahead and razor blade this back bumper separated and the back grill that has the exhaust ports now as far as I think I was mentioning in the preview oh, and by the way I forgot to mention the back bumper screws hold the wing in place as well so that'll come apart and if you want to keep the screws together where they belong and run together here And last but not least, if I'm not mistaken, there's four screws that hold the window in place. The nice thing about this is if you want to do the, the setup with an LED that flashes, which I think I mentioned I have one as well in previous video, I will be in the future using this guide pin to mount it so that way it can do its flashing. But for now, let's get going with this. And then the windshield is free. It is also slightly transparent, but it's hard to see probably in the video because it's obviously tinted. Let's go ahead and get this back together where this belongs. Or if you're more prepared than I am, you just bag and tag the, cr the screws correctly. But. then because like I said this thing is the paint is very thin so let's go ahead and show you you might not be able to see it so that you can see the mold points here that was pretty obvious when if I were to have put headlights in without repainting it so what I ended up doing on this particular defender was after I got done doing all the body work and getting it sanded down before I just did the regular primer I went ahead and sprayed it flat black on the inside so that way none of the extra light would come come through when I set up the LEDs then I went ahead and filler primed it touched it up and then I uh, 
painted the GM uh, Storm Gray Metallic. This one's going to go back to actual whatever silver they use. They'll maybe look up a paint coat or whatever. Now as far as doing, getting rid of these lines, I, there were a few on the other one, but this one doesn't seem to have it as bad. I went ahead and dragged the razor blade to kind of shave it down and then use sandpaper here to make sure it was good and smooth. Here I had to do a little bit of trimming on the other one, which this one seems to have a similar amount. So you just take the razor blade and give it a quick little trim. And that'll smooth that off. The rest you'll want to sand it. And you'll have flashing here that you'll want to get rid of. As far as the bumpers, they're in much better molded shape. You don't have to do as much work to them. Just basically scuff them and call it a day. I mean, you might have a little bit right here to take care of, depending on the, the cast quality. Like right here, there's a slight imperfection from molding, but nothing anybody's probably going to see, so you can probably leave it if you needed to. And so far, that is it for the body breakdown. Um, there's no reason to drag it through a sanding process considering I forgot my scuff pad and my sandpaper out in the garage. But you just go through and do that. I can do another video on painting once I get everything done. And then as far as the chassis, like I said, we can break into that later. I might go ahead and pull the antenna off for now because there's no need for it. Um, just like the other one, it looks more, one, it looks better, and plus the fact that it's not like I get to play with it anyway, it just sits on the on a desk or on a table um, as display at the moment, because here, I'll bring the other one in. I don't have it plugged in right now. Still have to trim the wires up. I haven't done anything really to it. I think even the one LED needs to be resoldered still. But like I said, I've got electrical tape on it at the moment. There's a little, this one actually held pretty well by itself by just hot gluing the wire to the body. So it doesn't look. It didn't look like it needed to be mounted down like the other ones in the back because of their position. Uh, these I bought off eBay in a big bundle kit. You get small enough LEDs and make sure you run the right voltage so that way you don't overheat it. You can see some of the flat black still underneath the primer. And then you'll be good to go. If you have any questions, please uh, drop them in the comment box. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, especially if you want to see progression, because actually on top of just getting it painted back to silver, trying to get it to be full function in the future, I do want to, this one I, So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and take a razor blade or figure something out. I'm going to work on this one, whether I have to work on the back side or the front side. I'm going to trim out the pod openings and actually get the um, probably like a doll rod or something to make the inside of the, the pod so that way it actually looks the part. Um, there is enough room on the sides here of this chassis if I wanted to leave it together to be able to house the pods. As far as a mechanism, I'm guessing some servos, whether they're, um, sorry, I'm having a, my train of thought derailed. Anyway, servos from an uh, airplane for like the, uh, the flaps would probably work really great for that because uh, you can set flaps to stay in a certain position. So maybe in, once I get things figured out, we can actually have the I can have this, it set up when it's driving around. You can hit a switch on a nicer controller, and the pods that open up. You put, depending on the size, I might be able to fit some LEDs in there, so it makes a makes them light up or something. But 
for now I don't want to make any promises I just we need to get I want to get the basics of getting it full function turning left and right and like I said getting the the pods functioning the back door I've noticed based on cost effectiveness whatever the the pod, the pod cover door doesn't actually square off so I'll have to do some checking on the uh, TV show pause it and kind of take a look and see what would look good as far as with in comparison to where the uh, the wing sits so we'll get that figured out and I do want to get this to open up and then I'm thinking about I don't know how I'm gonna make it but we'll start with some clay or something but make a little pod model that would at least you can hit a button the door would open up and then it just push it up and you can see it that's probably all that's gonna do um, as I mentioned before and now I can actually show you you the back weapons bay you have room up here on the top part if you can compare where the lines are you have room up here but unfortunately with the way it's assembled unless I make some modifications the bottom part of the door is actually structural so I might have to do some reconfiguring there as far as maybe once it's ready to go that uh, it'll be actually mounted this way instead of here and then I can just do spacers on the uh, wing and maybe make it work I don't know don't want to get ahead of myself like I said so that is it at the moment I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a box or just kind of loosely reassemble it and once I get some things put together as far as uh, servos and getting this tour apart I might do a little update on that but at the moment that's it so you guys have a great day